What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is the 2022 Genesis G80 Sport. So about this new Sport trim, well, it's new for 2022 and it's now the only way you can get the twin turbo V6 here in the G80. All regular G80s are now the four cylinder turbo only. So you gotta go for the Sport thing here if you want the bigger engine, which kind of makes sense. And uh, I love how they've added some extra sportiness here to the styling of the G80 as well to go along with it. So uh, you'll see up front there, you have a sportier front bumper. And I also like still just the styling here on the G80. I think it's just so beautiful there with the two slits there for the headlights. The nice large grill and you also see that the accents there around the grill and also the accents here on the fenders the door trim all that is dark chrome instead of the regular you know more bright work kind of chrome look you have on uh, regular g80s and so that just gives a little bit of an extra edge here and i also love so this one is the sport prestige that sport prestige gives you these 20 inch wheels instead of the 19s you got on a regular sport and these are a really cool look with these wheels that genesis has been using here over the past year or so on all their models that have this sports prestige trim and uh, just really also sharpen up the look here of the G80. And I also really love the side silhouette here on the G80 too. You know, it's uh, a little more sloping there in the rear than we get on a lot of the other regular sedan competitors and just kind of sets this apart a little bit. And out back there, you also have a sportier rear bumper. And it's just, again, uh, the continuation of that two slit theme there with those two lines for the taillights. And uh, overall, just a very classy back end, but it's also surprising in my opinion at least that there are no sport badges on the outside of this vehicle so the only way you know you're looking at a sport model is uh, to see the 3.5 T badge there on the back or some of the other accents you know that I pointed out here but it's kind of surprising that they're not advertising this as a sport on the outside but I just think it fits in with the kind of subtle classy theme here of the G80 and so overall I still think that you know they added a nice little bit of extra edge here with all the styling changes here for the sport. All right, so let's start up and go for a drive. The G80 here has uh, the nice Genesis key here. It has a little bit of like a satin finish to the front of it. And on the back, you have some nice metal buttons. And also on the Prestige trims, you also have the auto park thing where you can slide in and out of a spot with just using the key. And so anyway, a really nice key, but it is of course keyless access, keyless entry, push button start. So you just leave the key in your pocket, hit the engine start button. And it starts right up. And if you're curious to hear about the interior in the G80, my wife and I already did a full in-depth interior review on a regular G80 previously, so I won't rehash all that in this video. But uh, basically, you do get a few unique touches here for the Sport. The one big thing is you have a new steering wheel here with three spokes here instead of the two you got on a regular G80. And it's a little bit of a beefier wheel, has a really great 9.3 grip, nice 10 and 2 notches. You have some paddle shifters here on the back of it. And I really love this wheel. It's just really attractive and still works really great. You also do here in the Prestige trim get some sportier looking seats. So there are Napa seats here in the Prestige. The regular Sport gets non-Napa seats, but um, I really love this uh, like V shape you have here on the uh, you know way they did the uh, quilting, and it looks really nice. They're very comfortable, of course, and uh, so that's another really nice touch. And you also will see that on the Prestige versions, you also have this like cross weave carbon fiber trim here all along the uh, you know front here and also for the center. Center, and it's really nice. You would get aluminum trim on a regular sport, but that you know gives it a very premium feel. Also, all the uh, 3.5T versions, so this applied last year as well, but also this year, get the fully digital 3D gauges that you can get here, and they're very cool. I've enjoyed these gauges in uh, other Genesis models, but here in this, they work really good. The 3D thing's a little uh, strange to get used to. I prefer just leaving it in the 2D look, but uh, they're still really great gauges and a really nice upgrade over the uh, regular partially digital gauges you get in the regular G80s and so really nice to have all that but I mean this interior is just overall so so nice but definitely check out that full interior review for all the details. All right so setting off here in the G80 Sport so uh, first thing you notice here about these well it's still just a very nice thing to cruise around in it's just got excellent visibility and a nice soft ride they did a really good job of nailing the luxury component of a luxury car here with the g80 and that's something that some other luxury car competitors sometimes they really want to try and be sports cars and they kind of lose sight of the luxury thing and the regular g80 was really good with the luxury um, but it was a little bit lacking with the whole sport component so i'm very excited to see how this feels but one thing i am noticing immediately is that you have a pretty 
touchy brake pedal. And the brake pedal surprisingly actually has a customization to it as well. So you can actually have a sport uh, mode here for the brake that's separate from all the other drive modes. I have it in the comfort mode currently, but even in the comfort mode, it still is a little grabbier than I was expecting it to be, considering these brakes aren't like massively upgraded over a regular G80 or anything. Um, so they take a little bit of practice to be smooth with, and I'll continue to test that here during my week. Um, but otherwise though, I mean, listen to just how quiet it is as we're rolling. I mean, we're only rolling at 20 miles per hour, but it's just like so serene and it just feels so nice and luxurious in that regard as well. And uh, steering weight's also nice and uh, a little bit sportier here, even in the normal mode for the G80. But of course you can customize everything, by the way, with a custom mode. So that'll allow you to have the adaptive dampers in different settings compared to you know the powertrain and all that. So for example, you want everything to be super sporty, but you want a soft ride, you can have that. But it does have adaptive dampers here, so that really helps to smooth over everything. And it's actually a 3D preview system, so they say that it kind of reads the road and will uh, kind of pre-adapt the suspension for upcoming bumps and stuff. And uh, it sounds cooler than it actually feels in practice, but it, you know, it still just gives you a very smooth ride. Throttle response, even in normal mode here, is very, very immediate actually. It's not too jumpy, but you, know, you just tip in a little bit and it really starts to ramp up there and you feel those turbos starting to, you know, spool up a little bit. And uh, it just feels very punchy even whenever you're just kind of cruising around. Another thing that you will also notice whenever you're just tooling around, even at low speeds, is the rear wheel steering, which you don't get on all sports. It's only on the Sport Prestige here. But that's really cool and it can turn a couple of degrees in each direction So it actually gives you a tighter turning circle But it will also of course help just when with maneuverability uh, whenever you're out on the road as well Stability at higher speeds and all that so I'm very excited to try out how that feels here whenever we're uh, attacking a back road But yeah, I just you know really love you whenever you're just driving this thing in a relaxed manner it's just a very nice thing to cruise around in still even though they said that they did stiffen up the springs they're i think about four percent stiffer in the front and 12 percent stiffer in the rear but we're going to go ahead and put it up into the sport plus mode sport plus mode is unique here to uh, the sport um, so that, that basically just turns off trash control and turns things up just even a little bit more there's also launch control available if you want to use that but we're just going to stomp on it here and see how it does here we go very strong, really plants me in the back of my seat nicely, and nice meaty power. It didn't rip my head off or anything from a stop. It kind of, you know, takes a second to really start kicking in good there, and of course launch control will give you that more aggressive launch, but very nice. And it's also, I can tell the suspension is definitely a little bit stiffer because there's a little bit less squat and dive than there was in the regular G80, which was clearly, again, set up for comfort and that's okay. But I'm just noticing that it's, you know, still gives you a little bit of drama, but, you know, still very sure-footed. And also, of course, it is worth noting that all G80 sports are all-wheel drive only. So even though trash control is off, I wasn't really expecting much wheel spin or anything. Although the electronic limited slip differential will send 100% of the torque to the rear if it deems that it's uh, you know available and necessary it can do that but anyway as far as the power figures here in the G80 so it's running the three and a half liter twin turbo v6 engine it does 375 horsepower 391 pound-feet of torque and 0 to 60 times probably around five seconds although it hasn't really been tested by all the magazines just yet so it's hard to say definitively, uh, but I think that feels pretty spot on. Maybe a high four second uh, time, possibly, but you know something around there is what you can expect. And there's a dedicated manual mode, but uh, you can go ahead and just use the paddle shifters here. And, um and it, you know, it does pretty quick shifts. It's the eight-speed automatic that's built in-house by Genesis and Hyundai and Kia. Uh, I'll use this in various different models. And it's not a bad transmission. It's smooth and, you know, it does what you expect it to do most of the time. It's not the sportiest though. It's not going to compete with the ZF eight-speed you get in some of the German competitors or even like the dual clutch that's a little bit rougher in some of the Mercedes stuff. So this isn't the sportiest out there, but I think, you know, if you're okay with having a little bit more of a luxury bias to the transmission, and then you'll like this transmission just fine. Anyway, we're coming up some corners here that I always take. Let's see how the G80 Sport handles. Roads are a little bit greasy here because we just had a little bit of drizzle. Um, so I'm not gonna be able to push it quite as much, but man, oh man, I can already tell though, this thing, ooh, yeah, they improved the handling. This is what I wanted out of the G80 whenever I reviewed the first one. It was, oh yeah, this is so good. I can actually feel the verbal steer. It, oh yeah, it once, 
it wants to really play around on you there. So I'm going to play around with that a little bit more in a minute. But it has really good handling. So like I said, you got the adaptive dampers there and they're in their stiffer mode, which by the way, I mean, we're on, you know, we're going over bumps and stuff and it still isn't like it's super sharp or anything. You know, it's still a nice comfortable ride just while still giving you, uh, you know, just really good handling here. Again, a little bit greasy here, but it's actually gripping very well too. And I'm impressed because um, this one's running the Pirelli uh, P0 all season tires. There's an option with the Sport Prestige, you can either get with all seasons or with summer tires. Man, this thing likes to rock it out of corners. So, so punchy, especially whenever it's in these higher RPMs. Uh, but anyway, so uh, this one's running just the all seasons. You can get those summer tires though for much better uh, traction and performance and handling if you want. But anyway, they're 245 wide in the front, 275s in the rear. It's a cool staggered setup there. And uh, yeah, it, it really wants to play around. I'm impressed. This thing feels pretty dynamic. The only thing is, though, you can feel the weight. These weigh about 4,500 pounds, a little bit heavier than some of the competitors, and, you know, you feel a little bit of that. Um, you know, that's just going to come down to whether you want the most sharp handling luxury uh, saloon out there or not. You know, it's just going to come down to personal preference. But honestly, I don't mind the weight too much. I'm not, you know, in one of these vehicles expecting it to feel like a Lotus Elise or anything. You know, it's going to feel heavy, but, you know, part of that extra weight, I think, gives you a little bit of extra comfort over some of the other stuff. Like, you know, the uh, lower AMG versions of, like, the E-Class and stuff really can have a pretty stiff ride. And this, I kind of like how this is a little bit more on the luxury side than some of those are, but that's okay because this is a luxury car. That's what it's for. It's for someone who wants, you know, the power, wants a little bit of a sportier setup, you know, but doesn't want to have their back broken every time they go over a bump. And I think that this kind of soaks up bumps a little bit better than the current generation E-Class does, in my opinion. Now, it's been several years since I drove that, but I just, I still remember just how stiff that car was even from many years ago. By the way, it's also worth noting we do have the active sound enhancement on I have it on the maximum effect um, and you can hear there's a little bit there but it's not like you know anything crazy loud or uh, unnatural feeling it just sounds you know very normal and you know pretty realistic in my opinion so I like that they have that option but it's nice you can turn that off so if you don't want that you don't have to have it and so it's great that they give you that but you know as we're just even turning into a parking lot here just a really quick steering you have that's really exaggerated by that rear wheel steer really adds an element of agility and fun to this thing that I'm very much appreciating. But anyway, we're gonna do another acceleration. I'm gonna do it from a stop and see if I can do a little bit of a brake boost here. <laughs> there we go, launching it. It's kind of snapped into gear there, a little bit firmer too. So that is also part of the Sport Plus, I think, is it gives you a little bit of a uh, snappier shifts out of this eight speed, but it still is, very much smoothed over it's not you know gonna again be as snappy as some of the others out there that's okay you know just again i like the extra layer of polish you get on the genesis that you don't get with some of the competitors one other unique thing that's worth noting about the uh, prestige trim here of the g80 sport is that it does get a unique suspension too so i think part of that is to dial in these 20s versus the 19s you get on a regular sport to give you a little bit of a stiffer ride so you know if you test drive one of these or if you're wanting something that's even a smoother ride just with the power you know just skip the prestige trim and uh, you know you'll have you know probably a little bit of an even softer ride than this but i kind of like having the slightly firmer ride because it certainly does not feel you know like it's unluxury car like or anything it still feels very appropriate for a luxury vehicle and I think that honestly you got to get the rear wheel steering and that is again only in this uh, prestige trim so I think that that really adds a lot but if you are someone who test drives and doesn't like that rear wheel steer then you know you can still have a lot of the same fun of the G80 Sport here just uh, without that rear wheel steer so it's nice to give people options too I really appreciate that because it's not a one-size-fits-all thing you know people want different things and I like that Genesis also gives people you know the choice of you know still giving you the awesome engine and all that and uh, the great G80 packaging here, but you know, with the option of whether or not you want something this dynamic. But oh, I yes, this it feels really good to me. Oh man, every single one of these corners, I am. Well, I'm so impressed. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting giddy with just how good this thing handles. Ah oh, yeah, see, because whenever I review the regular G80, I was like, 
this is really nice and comfortable, feels great, but I'm like, I, I knew that they had such a good platform here with the new G80, and they could feel so good if they just gave it a sportier tune, and I'm sure they had this sport trim planned all along, but I'm really glad they decided to do a sport trim here for this generation, because man, oh man, this shows what Genesis can do, and I mean, all their stuff handles fantastically well, but oh, you can tear up a background. <laughs> oh man, this thing is doing so good. And uh, yeah, it wants to slide around on me though. I mean, again, the roads are a tiny bit greasy, but still. All right, and it stayed kind of neutral there. So it kind of, that corner does provoke either oversteer or understeer. And with a little bit of a slickness on the road here, I could see that it was kind of for a split second wanting to go into a little bit of an understeer thing, but then I could feel the back end kind of correcting it and sorting it out. And so, this is, I don't know, I really like the way they dialed this in. Maybe if you're trying to do full-blown drifts or something, a rear wheel steer doesn't feel great, but uh, just tearing up a back road there, hand down, this feels fantastic. I absolutely love the way they set this whole thing up. And I know it's not a direct competitor, but the last luxury sports sedan that made me that giddy around those back roads was the Acura TLX Type S, um, which I still think has a little bit of a sharper front end, but I think this has a more playful back end. And again, they're not really competitors. This is a little bit more expensive, but if you are cross shopping them, I would probably lean towards this being a little bit more exciting, a little bit more fun, which is very high price because I love the TLX Type S and it still is very good, but uh, I think this actually has a beat a tiny bit. And we're going over a bunch of huge potholes here now and it still does a really good job of gliding over them even in Sport Plus mode, but we'll go ahead and chill out here and go into this, the comfort mode, hit some more of these potholes and wow, I'm like, yeah, it's... Okay, so I feel a few of them there, but it really glides over these things really nicely. Very luxury car appropriate for the ride still. So even on the 20s, even with the sportier suspension tune that's a little bit stiffer, still just feels like an excellent you know, luxury cruiser whenever you want that as well. And now we're out on the highway here in the G80 Sport and uh, it's a really nice cruiser out here too. Even with a bunch of you know rush hour traffic here on the highway, you know, you hear it a little bit, but very nice and you know pretty refined and then if I were to just turn on this Lexicon uh, stereo system which is a very nice sounding stereo then you kind of drown that stuff out even more but you know very luxury car appropriate for sure but I'm testing the highway drive assist 2.0 system which this car is running and uh, it is really cool that one new thing that it didn't have in the past is that now the head-up display shows me a lot more information including its its visualization of all the cars around me which is kind of a cool touch that it does that it also does do the automated lane changes but they definitely take their time so uh, I'm not going to wait because we got too much traffic here for me to wait around for it to do it but you know in more relaxed circumstances it can do that for you but a lot of that kind of stuff you know you're better off taking over if you need to be a little bit more assertive so this highway drive assist 2.0 system though um, I still don't love the way it does lane keep assist it still um, isn't super good with staying in the lanes now it is staying in the lanes currently but it really likes to ping pong still a little bit and uh, get a little closer to the road lines than I would personally like one thing that has been improved that I do like is that now the head-up display will show you when it's doing active steering assist previously you had to stare down in the gauge cluster of all these vehicles to actually know whether or not it was doing that. It didn't give you any kind of audible alert or anything. Now I can just, you know, see on the head-up display whether or not it's actually doing a steering assist. And so that is one nice improvement this has that, again, I have not seen on other, uh, you know, Genesis products with this uh, system so far. But otherwise, all the other safety tech, you know, is loaded with every possible thing Genesis has. Um, so that means you have, like, the blind view monitor here, which will actually show you a camera view of your blind spot whenever you have your turn signal on. Of course, it has all the usual bl uh, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, all the usual stuff you get these days. Um, you know, this has all of that as well. So really nice that, you know, you have all the safety tech here as well whenever you just want to cruise and relax. But anyway, thanks to Genesis, I'm going to have the G80 Sport here for an entire week. So I'm going to drive around all over the place. Then I'll come back and give you guys my final real world fuel economy, as well as my thoughts on the pricing, how it compares to its competition, and anything else I notice here during my week of driving. All right, so I've been driving the Genesis G80 Sport here for a week now, and I love this thing. It is so nice to drive. It's so comfortable, yet it has all the sportiness you could want. 
just the second you turn the wheel, you get that four wheel steering going and uh, you know, it reminds you just how dynamic it is as well. I think this now takes the cake as my favorite sedan in this segment. And it's honestly my favorite Genesis product as well. I really love the G70s. They're fantastic, very dynamic but they do have a pretty small back seat and I love that this has all the space and yet has so much comfort. This is definitely softer and more comfortable than a G70, but on a back road, I have just as much fun as I do in a G70. And so I'm really impressed with the way that they were able to just do everything in this and do everything so well too. The only little thing that I can complain about is a truly a nitpick thing is that sometimes whenever I'd hop in this vehicle and drive for the first few miles, the blower fan for the heater and stuff was a little noisy. That's probably just a little bit of a production error and I'm sure that's something could be easily fixed. But that is my only little complaint that I have with this thing. Otherwise, it has just been perfect the entire week. I've put about 100 miles here on it so far and um, yeah, I've just loved every single one of them. One other thing though that isn't the best in the G80 Sport here is the fuel economy. That's the last two things I mentioned here are really fuel economy and pricing. So fuel economy here, um, I over my 100 miles of driving here, I've been getting 16 mpg. Now these are rated at 17 mpg in the city, 26 on the highway, and 20 combined. So I'm only one mpg under that uh, city rating, which is appropriate considering you know it's winter time and even in summer sometimes I get one to two mpg less than the city rating with the type of driving that I do, um, which was mostly suburban back roads kind of cruising around at 35 miles per hour. There was a little bit of highway mixed in and a little bit of stop and go, but you know, mostly just that, uh, you know, relaxed kind of stuff. So yes, 16 MPG. Now, you know, we are in a vehicle with V6 engine with twin turbos strapped onto it. It's, you know, almost 400 horsepower, very powerful, and it's a heavy vehicle. So you're moving a lot of weight, you know, with that engine as well. So, you know, I kind of have to cut a little bit of a break. And so if you can afford something that's $70,000 as tested, I'm sure, you know, a few extra bucks for gas isn't going to be a big deal. But it is worth noting that if you do really love the G80, but you just want better fuel economy, the uh, non-sport, you know, with the four-cylinder turbocharged engine, that's still 300 horsepower, not slow or anything. And that gets about 5 mpg better in all the metrics than this. It's also worth noting they are coming out with an electrified G80. E, and so that electric, it's gonna be all electric, and of course, then you have much better efficiency in that. We don't have any details on the US version of that just yet as of the time we'll be filming this here, but that could be another potential option if you really do love this package, but you know, just want something a little more efficient. Um, but yeah, getting back to the uh, price tag, that's the last thing to mention is uh, this one as tested is $70,000 almost exactly, but the G80 Sports do start at 64,000, it's just this prestige trim, um, which is the extra $6,000. And $6,000 is a big jump for a trim package, but keep in mind that that adds a lot of stuff. It adds the rear wheel steer, it adds the head-up display, Napa leather, you get the full digital gauges here in this, otherwise it'd be partially digital. Uh, you get the suede headliner, you get the 20 inch wheels, the sportier suspension tune, sportier brake setup. There's a lot of improvements there for $6,000. And I think hands down, if you want the most dynamic G80, you gotta go for the prestige pack, again, just for that rear wheel steer alone. So, you know, $70,000, it's a lot of money for anything, you know, but especially something that's not a full-blown performance model or something. I mean, 70,000 is getting up there, but you have to keep it in uh, the perspective and the context of the other competitors this competes with. So the main competitors here, we're talking about the Mercedes E450, we're talking about the BMW 540i with xDrive and the Audi A6 55 uh, version, um, which has, you know, a little bit of a higher performing engine and, uh, but isn't quite as high performing as the S6. And so those three competitors are all six to $7,000 more expensive than this comparably equipped. And so, you know, I mean, it just comes down to, do you want to spend an extra $7,000 for the German competitors, you know, it just comes down to whether or not you think it's worthwhile. Now, I will say, now I've not driven the newest versions of all three of those vehicles, but I have driven that current generation of the 5 Series and the E-Class. And they were different trims. I drove an E43 before that was discontinued, and then I drove an M550i version of the current Gen 5 Series. Um, so both of those definitely sportier than even those lower trims that I'm referencing. But they definitely had, at least the Mercedes had a definitely a stiffer ride, not nearly as comfortable as this. The 5 Series was very comfortable still, but just felt a little weightier and didn't feel quite as dynamic as this does. Again, that was several years ago. Things may have improved in those, so I can't do a perfect comparison between them, but 
all I know is that from my experiences in the competition, hands down, I would take this. And I mean, this is the only one, by the way, that does have rear wheel steer. And that makes a huge difference. It really does. That's why, I mean, Porsche is doing it. A bunch of companies are doing this as well. And I'm kind of surprised the Germans don't do it in their lower trims to compete with this. But, um, you know, so that's, I think, why this is going to feel a little more dynamic and agile than the competitors this is, you know, going up against. But one thing that this does also have over all of those is that you still get the fantastic 10-year, 100,000-mile Genesis warranty. That might not matter if you're the average luxury car lessee that, you know, leases these things and dumps them after three years and it's a company car or whatever, then, you know, the, the warranty doesn't really matter. But if you're someone who, you know, wants something that's going to last a long time and you're buying your luxury vehicle to actually keep it and hold on to it beyond, you know, a couple of years, then I think this is a really great alternative because you have that extra peace of mind for the powertrain and you know that's kind of the, some of the stuff that gets expensive later on in life so it's great to have that extra coverage here in this and i think it's a great alternative to someone who you know misses the lexus gs which has now uh, gone away and uh, you know wants something that's reliable um that you know isn't going to have the same high uh you know cost that you get with all the germans as far as servicing and all that kind of stuff you know i think the genesis here is going to be a lot more affordable and manageable either for new or whenever you're buying one of these things used i think it's going to be a little bit more enticing because that 10-year warranty does transfer if you're going for a uh, manufacturer certified pre-owned version of one of these G80s then you'll be able to continue to have the remainder of that 10-year 100,000 mile powertrain warranty so that's also you know definitely something to consider and um, just another nice cherry on top of the very great proposition here of the G80 and so I mean you know it really is though beyond value because like I said it, it I truly think it handles better it rides better uh, from a comfort standpoint they just did everything so so well i also have to say that the looks i think are a little more distinctive than most of the competitors as well which very much blend in with the crowd this kind of stands out a little bit more and i really like that about it as well so yeah that's about all of my thoughts here on the gd sport if i was in the market for something you know in this price range you know a sports sedan hands down this would be my pick wouldn't think twice about it easy decision in my book this would be my pick for sure. I absolutely love this thing. But anyway, let me know your thoughts on it in the comments below. Huge thanks to Genesis for providing me here with the g &E Sport to review for you guys today. And yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.